Hey guys, welcome back to LA Noir, the white shoe slain. Got another homicide case here, guys. Let's see what this one is. If I've learned anything from the past is that we better pay attention to these scenes because sometimes they actually help us identify the murderer. take a I'll, I was trying to take a better look at the guy because that actually helps you sometimes Good morning gentlemen and what a grand morning it is too we have just cause for celebration Galloway and Phelps are sending another fiend to San Quentin a nice showy trial and he'll be strapped down with gas seeping into his tiny reptile brain now to fresh business Galloway and Phelps the task is at hand the address is on the hill North downtown or Fremont Avenue. I'm assuming he was talking about Feeney from the last case. That's Skipper, scumbag. Is the new letter genuine? Now, boys, we all know how many imbeciles have confessed in the short case. Ray Pinker will let us know in good time. An Englishman I want to make homicides. You know you After you, you sir. Says, we keep locking them up, but the bodies keep piling up. Yeah, California's love of fad, Phelps. As long as the bricks hold up at San Quentin, there'll always be killers in this town to send. So what is the case for today? California. Ladies and gentlemen, stop. Oh, wait a minute. This is the first time we've ever actually had a case where it's raining. This is the first time it's ever rained in this game. It doesn't rain much in California. Or so I hear. Whenever I've gone, it's never rained, but... First the letter, and now another body. Come on, you can't keep on telling me there's not a killer still out there. You know, Phelps, all these arrests from the record are giving you a reputation. You don't want them turning into unsolved. Getting a vicious killer off the streets is more important than my reputation. Really? And besides, landing a big fat marlin is more impressive than an ocean full of minnows. The minnows make it the man, Phelps. You can't always hit home runs. Sometimes you just gotta make the first moves. You're going straight here. The thing that I'm kind of wondering is, we've caught all of the murderers, but why do these bodies keep piling up? Is there like a mastermind behind all of this? Is this like some sort of cult that we don't know about? That guy there will lead us up. Take the next ride. Interesting. Okay, so we're going to follow this car here. I'm stealing myself for what I'm about to see. It'll just be another dead body for you. Get used to seeing them. You're the gig when you're working homicide with us. It's just getting a little spooky. If I say so myself. We're about to come across another naked female body, and uh I'm gonna have to edit this again. Detectives? Phelps and Galloway, homicide. Scene secure. The rest of the patrolmen are going door to door, canvassing for witnesses. Thanks. Keep me informed. Will do, detective. This looks awfully familiar. I think that's the impression the boys from the examiner took with them as well. There's nothing original under the sun. Why should murder be any different? What do we have so far? Not much trace evidence to speak of. Storm blew in around 10 last night, and the rain washed most of it away. And the body? Looks like she was tipped out of an automobile from the tire tracks and superficial injuries. Strangled with a length of rope. And for my money, it's triple braid again. Time of death. From her temperature, maybe 2 a.m. But it was cold last night. Usual head injuries. Okay. Life, trauma. Knock him over the head, then strangle and mutilate. No message with this one. At least she was left clothed. I doubt very much he was concerned <laughs> with her dignity. The green silk dress is very distinctive. Any sign of her other shoe? No. And no handbag or other personal effects. So this one's quite different. Okay. This one is indeed quite different. So we have got... Uh, let's inspect the body first before anything. Yeah, that's a triple bread for sure. Interesting. There appears to be a dry cleaning label. Ticket. Superior Laundry Services, F1363. Well, that's a clue of any. Pretty good. K9. 
Okay, let's check the left arm of the victim. We can see the shoes as well. They don't seem to be at size 8 this time around. Seem to be slightly bigger. No jewelry stolen or forced out of the victim on the left hand. Went on to her right hand or arm. Neither. How about the stomach, the torso area? I don't think we can go to the torso area. No, I think we're good with that. All right, we're going to go to evidence B here, which seem to be the footsteps. I want to say a size 10, maybe? No drag marks. Killer was moving around, surveying the scene. No size. Okay. Oh, there was a vehicle here. And it skeet skeeted out of here. Our driver and our killer are most likely one and the same. Hmm. Okay, we've got all the clues. Now, wait, wait, what is this right here? Five dollar bill. I will take that. Thank you very much. Maybe. God damn it, just take it, Phelps. You know what five bucks can do? I'm stumped. Ideas? We still got the laundry label to check off. Yeah, we're probably going to have to go to that. I'll call you when I know something. Meanwhile, get on with the case. All right, fine. Where's the phone here? Here it is. Oh, wow. I didn't even see it. Well, this is interesting. Detectives. Maybe a relative? We're the houses across the street and up the block. This lady thinks she has something for us. Detective Phelps, LAPD. I'm Mrs. Barton, Catherine Barton. I live just across the way. Catherine Barton, suspicious person. 55-year-old female with blue eyes. Everybody here got blue eyes. Like, what's up with all these pretty-ass people, man? Did you see anyone around here last night? Not last night, but yesterday, early evening, I saw that awful hobo. Do you have a description? Tall, gaunt, horribly disfigured. I think he may have had an accident in the war. He's a very scary, angry man. Any idea where we might find him? One of the hobo camps around here. He's some kind of hobo leader. They all follow him around. Thank you, ma'am. You've been a big help. Of course. Anything I can do to help. I'd hate to think that something so ghastly could happen right here and nothing be done about it. Well, thank you. By the way, we have a new outfit, which I have not actually gone to. And I feel terrible for it. Which one is my new outfit? I think it's this one. Yeah, this is my new outfit. Very nice. Looking clean as a whistle. Phelps badge 1247. How can I help, detective? I need an address on Superior Laundry Services. Just a moment. Superior Laundry Services, 1260 West 1st Street. Can you track down reports of hobo camps in the vicinity of Signal Hill? Just a moment, Detective. There's a large camp under the bridge on Grand between Temple and Sunset. Thank you. All right, hobo camp and the laundry. Let's see, where do we go to first? I think I'm probably going to head to the laundry store first. Can you drive to this one? Yeah, let's go to the Superior Laundry exactly Services. Where are we going? Let's check that place out. And then we'll go to the hobo just in case. No message. Excuse me? There was no message. Where? On the Vic. The last bodies had something written on it. This one didn't. I'm failing to follow you. Can't be the same guy as what I'm saying, right? Before you start trying to link this to Maldonado and all the others. There are more factors to consider than the messages, Rusty. This doesn't fit your pattern, Cole. End of conversation. Understand? 11.57 a.m. All right, let's check this out. OK. 
Okay. At least the rain stopped. We can change back into those white bucks now. And it's really dark outside, huh? Sheesh. Phelps and Galloway, LAPD. We're investigating a case, and one of your laundry labels came up. F-1363. If you give me a minute, I'll go find a register, and you can take a look. You take a look for yourself. I've got clothes that need pressing. Hmm. You the number down on that dress, is it there? Laundry ledger. Okay, so use to read entries. All right, so what is... What is... Let me see the clues. We've got the laundry label, which is 1363. 1363. Mrs. T. Terrellson. 43 Emerald Street, Westlake. There it is. Well, there it is, sir. Okay, that's the book that we just found. I'm at a loss. Gotta go. We have a lead. Let's find out what the husband has to say for himself. I kind of feel like going to the hobo camp, but I feel like since we just got this lead, we should probably check this out first. Because I have a feeling that maybe the hobo camp might have a very important figure. So I'd say maybe find out more information before we head there. So we're going to go to 43 Emerald Street. I've got a feeling you're about to meet another wife killer. You've always got that feeling, Rusty. Yeah, and it's usually correct. Please, please, for once, can you not let your assumptions color your detective work? Just you wait. Nordic types show a particular disposition for this stuff. Hmm. Is it the husband again? <laughs> ah, here we are. Husband seems to be inside. There's a lot of things around here. Hmm. Oh, they have a daughter? Oh, God. Yes, they do. This is sickening. Hello? Oh. Yes? Detectives Phelps and Galloway. Is your wife home, sir? My wife went out last night, and she hasn't come home. Can you describe your wife and what she was wearing? We were out at a friend's place, Bobby Ross's, for a party. She was kind of dolled up. She had her green silk dress, open-toed white shoes. Those are her favorite shoes. Can we come in, Mr. Tarleton? I'm afraid we have some rather bad news. Do you have someone who can look after your children, Mr. Tarleton? I've been trying to arrange a sitter. Look, tell me what's happened. I'm afraid your wife was murdered last night. Her body was found this morning. And we're very sorry for your loss. I know this is a difficult time, Mr. Tarleton. But we are going to need you to answer some questions. First, we're going to take a look around. What for? You don't think this that... This procedure. You see to your girls. Oh, my God. <laughs> These little girls are funny, bro. Stay here till Daddy's finished talking to these men. Where's Mommy? Everything's going to be all right, sweetheart. We would like Mommy to come home now, Daddy. What's the problem, Terrelson? Let him search. You got nothing to hide. This guy totally killed his wife. funny, Terrelson? Some bums think filling out a missing persons report actually rules him out as a suspect. Hmm. There's the purse. Nothing significant. Okay, maybe not. I'm, I'm an idiot. Okay, we're gonna keep searching. We've got a picture right here. I'm gonna flip that over. Check Aaron's was a regular. bar. 
All right, we've got a new POI, point of interest, so that's good. What is this photograph? I wonder why the picture was turned down. Hmm. Very pretty picture indeed, though. If I say so myself, mister. <laughs> what are you hiding? Punk. Oh, what is this? Circumstantial. Okay, nothing of significance. We've got a bunk bed. Nope. This is the kids' room, so I doubt that there's anything relatively important here. But, of course, you got to rule everything out. You've got to search everywhere. Hmm. We've got a boat lover. Okay, fans of chess. So Baron's Bar is definitely somewhere they go regularly. So here goes again. Baron's Bar again. Someone must be real sweet on this dive. Yep. Anything around here? Oh, there's a boat outside. I'm going to go check that out too. Hold on. Before we do that, check this note. If you'd excuse me, ladies. Not everything here is going to be relevant. Good for the... No, those are just notes for... Okay, let's see. The fridge. Nothing here. It's just a cookie jar. Come on, we gotta... Ooh! Ooh! Is this the per... She went out without her handbag? Oh, this guy killed her for sure. She'd have to be in quite a state to leave this behind. Teresa Tarleton. 46. Expires 47. 1910. Date of birth. Interesting. The boots. We could see if Pinker can match the impression to the crime scene. Oh my god, dude, he killed his... Oh my god, that's sickening. <gasps> Lars was out in the rain last night. Wet jacket. Oh, dude, he killed her. Oh my god. Why would people do this, bro? This is disgusting. Okay, let's see here. Oh, There's a small ass boat. Like, <laughs> I'm outside standing and I barely probably fit through that door. What the heck? Sheesh. What is this? This is the rope indeed. Looks like a match with the ligature marks. And it's been cut. Oh, man. Oh man, oh man, you are in trouble, mister. Mm -mm -mm. You are in big trouble, sir. Let's speak to this man. I'll be out of your way momentarily, ladies. For the record, Mr. Terrelson, what is your wife's name? Teresa. Do you have any idea why anyone would want to hurt your wife? No. Everyone loved Teresa. She was so full of life. It can't be anyone who knew her. For the record, Terrence, did you kill your wife? Oh my god. This is... No. I didn't kill my wife. And fuck you for suggesting it. Oh, I got that wrong. You said you went to a party at Bobby Ross's place? That's right, Bobby had a bunch of people over. We were having a good time. She said she was bored and decided to leave. I don't believe it. You let your drunk wife leave the party and go off on her own? Look, I was angry. I was having a good time. She has to go and ruin it. We always have to do what she wants to do. Last night she wanted to go dancing. Any idea where? Where she always goes. Bar down on North Beaudry Avenue. Baron's Bar. 
She goes there, drinks too much, gets maudlin, and calls me. I go and bring her home. So she's a drunk, victim state of mind. Mr. Terrelson, was Teresa happy at home? Yeah, I think she was. Bad cop, right Spill off the bat. Mr. Terrelson, we like the look of you for this, so you better give us something. We're at the party. She has a few and says she wants to go out dancing. We only have the sitter until nine. I get mad. I tell her to go ahead, but I'm staying. She storms out. Look, I'm doing well at cards. I hardly ever do well. I married her because she was so much fun, but now she drives me fucking crazy. What time did she leave the party? About 8.30, maybe a little earlier. Last contact with the victim. When was the last time you saw your wife? Around 8.30. The card game at Bobby's was wrapping up. I played out my hand and drove home here. I paid the sitter and went to bed. What about the jacket, though? Let me use that. You're lying, Lars. You didn't come straight home, did you? They said it was around 2 a.m., so... figure that? Yeah. Earlier, one of the cops said it was around 2 a.m., so there's no way. You were out in the rain. You got soaked, Lars. We found your wet weather gear. Okay, I stayed a little later than I said. This cute little brunette was hitting on me. <laughs> Teresa noticed. I was half cut. I walked her home from Bobby's, but nothing happened. I walked back and got the car this morning. Thanks for answering our questions, Mr. Charleston. You'll need to go downtown to identify your wife's body. I should have taken her dancing. In my experience, Mac, if you're giving to Brods, you'll be giving into them your entire life. We could break the husband's story right now. Hmm. Call in, get some uniforms dispatched to check out his alibi. Uh, okay, let's use the phone. We still got a couple more leads, Operator, like the bar and stuff and the hobo camp, so. Hmm. Now. Cole Phelps, badge 1247. Can you run an address for a Bobby Ross? Then send some uniforms over. Would you like him picked up? No. Suspect says he was with Ross last night. We need to confirm the alibi. I'll get a prowl car dispatched. Thanks, ma'am. All right, well, we'll be seeing you again, sir. Please, can I have some time to explain to my daughters? I don't know, man. It's hard to tell. Appreciate your time, sir. It's hard to tell if he's guilty or not. I feel like he is, but you're behind the wheel. You and know how that is. Where are we going? Are we gonna head back to Baron's Bar? Hmm. Yeah, let's go there. Bar frequented by murder victim. You believe this guy's story? Kind of rings true. Baron's Bar. All right, we're here. Let's go. Gents, drink? Phelps and Galloway, LAPD. I'm Benny Clough. This is about Teresa Terrelson? Yes, it is. How do you I know? about it on the radio. They're saying it was that Black Dahlia freak again? God damn it. Yeah, I rang that husband of hers. Oh, did the babysitter you? The babysitter said he was out. If you don't mind, we have a few questions. Did you now? Really? Last contact. Okay, so this is Benny Clough. Brown eyes, brown hair, 38. Sex male, and he's the owner. He's a bartender. Baron's Bar. What time did Teresa leave? Uh, around uh, 1030, I think. I feel like that's okay. On foot, in a car, by bus? How was it? She called for a cab. Did you get the number? Sure I did. I like Therese. The only time she has a drink is when things aren't going so good at home. I was worried about her. What is the special of the day? Oh. Put out an APB on the cab. 3591. Should be traceable. Ooh. We've got another clue. That's good. 
Vagrant male suspect. Who was she with? We've had reports about a tall, gaunt-looking hobo. He wasn't here last night? I get plenty of bums in here. But nothing to fit that description. I feel like he's not sure of himself, so I'm gonna go with a bad cop. The likelihood is that whoever she left here with killed her. Give it up, Benny. Come on, Our Benny, damn it! Creeps were all over her, promising to take her dancing. You get a good look at these guys? Sure, I got a good look. One of them was a sailor in uniform. His cap said, uh, USS Indiana. And the other man? The other guy? is Richard Bates. He's sitting in the back right now. Red oh. polo shirt. Oh. Okay. Any idea where she was headed? Uh, nope. I didn't get that. I mean, I guess that's the right. husband said she wanted to go dancing. And yeah, she always wants to dance when she's been drinking. She was trying to talk some guys into taking her to one of the dance halls. Thank you for your help, Mr. Clough. We'll take it from here. Man, women back then hey, were no crazy. Problem. Even with kids. This is Bates. That's him. LAPD. Don't make me chase you, shitbird. Oh, let the son of a shit. Bitch get away. Why would he even tell him instead of just going there? Go, Phelps. Get after it. Oh, my God. Got to ride. Get in and drive. Ooh. Oh, God. Here we go. It's go time. Me there. Who knows what this guy will pull <laughs> when he's cornered. We could have a killer on our hands. Oh my God. This guy is crazy. All these freaking chases get crazier and crazier. I don't think the killer would be kicking back in the bar where he met the dickhead. <laughs> Listen, a creature of habit is your killer. For some reason, they're sticklers for routine. Don't go to sleep on me. Get me back in close. We got this. We got this. Pop them tires. Hit it. Clean this asshole off the road. Hit him where it hurts. Now. Keep it steady and I'll try to bust his tires. There we go. Mm. Let's end this part. Right here. All right. All right. You got me. I've had enough. Get out of the car. Show me punk. your hands. Okay, Bates. You're going to answer some questions. I have a choice in this. Richard Bates, brown eyes and brown hair, 35 year old male, acquaintance of victim Teresa. Last night, you went drinking with a lady in the bar. Now she's dead, and your face is all messed up. I'm in the clear on that. She preferred a sailor. You could lay it off on him. Are we finished? Hmm. Do you want my partner to sap you? Tell us what we want to know. She was okay. Drunk. Pissed off at her old man, wanting to go dancing. I thought I'd ply her with a few drinks and get my end away. Looks like your salty had the same idea. So what happened when you left the bar? Sailor boy laid one on me. A cheap shot. After that, I don't know. Yeah, you're lying. You've done time, haven't you, Richard? Is that why you ran? I'm on parole. On what offense? Sexual assault. Look, oh. I was lying there on the sidewalk. He flags a cab and jumps in with the broad. We're taking you in, Bates. How come? Just for a chat. Nice private chat. I'll explain my theory of once a degenerate, always a degenerate. Take him to Central. He's a material witness in a murder case. Find him a cozy cell. Richard here knows the drill. Hmm. All right, well, I guess now we can use the phone. Let's see. Phelps, badge 1247. I need an APB out on a yellow cab, number 3591. Ask dispatch to relay all sightings to car 11K. No problem. I'll get on the radio. 
Were there any incident reports filed in the vicinity of Barron's Bar on North Beaudry Avenue? We're tracking a sailor who was involved in a fight outside the bar. I can check the reports, Detective. I have a message for you from Captain Donnelly. Message reads, James Jessup, U.S. Navy Able Seaman, has information relevant to your case. Jessup is currently being hmm. detained at Central Station. Okay. Could be our man. Off to Central Station, help. Jason Jessup. I feel like sometimes when you get like a certain suspect Off right away, it's the better to go there versus going somewhere else. So I'm going to I'm gonna go there first and then I'm probably going to head to the hobo camp after. All right. Back at the station, boys. Here we go. He's in interview too. Thanks. What do you make of him? Sailor on furlough who looks like he's in trouble and knows it. This is two, right? Detectives Phelps and Galloway. We know why you're here, Jessup. So it would be best if you answered our questions truthfully. I don't want any trouble. That's why I'm here. I heard on the radio about this lady getting killed. I got leave from my CO to come down straight away. So why did you kill her? I didn't kill anyone. Look, you need to believe me. Let's start at the beginning. You went to Baron's bar. What time did you arrive? 24 years old. I got a 24-hour pass. I got there around 7. That's where you met Teresa Terrelson? Sure. We had a couple of drinks. You're lying out of your ass. So you tried to make a woman who was incredibly drunk? Look, I'm not proud of myself, but I never hurt her. You took her dancing? That's right. I caught a cab to the Crystal Ballroom. Incident with Bates. What a whore, by the way. You had a fist fight with Richard Bates over Mrs. Terrelson. You met the guy? He's a creep. You should take a look at him for this. Yeah, this guy's eyes are telling me a huge story here, and She's that is that. <laughs> finger directly at you, Jessup. I only had one night before I was back in the tub. He had all the time in the world to look for some action. I belted him. I'd do it again. She was better off with me. Sure. You're a shining example of chivalry, Jessup. We're holding you till we can clear this with the driver. Yeah, my CO said as much. All's fast, okay. Can you put the guy in two in a cell and inform the commander? Sure, detective. Got a message for you. Sighting of your disfigured hobo on Brand between Temple and Sunset. And it looks like the bow has a record, too. He's wanted in connection with two female assaults. Thanks. Oh. Oh, are we going now to the hobo? I was going there anyways. You know the way. You can drive. And where oh, exactly shit. Are we going? All right. I think we ought to investigate the hobo lead. Well, if you think we ought to, then I guess we ought. Here we go. Three Seems like the lady was right after all. On the hook. And still no hard evidence on any of them. Eleven K, go ahead. Patrolman reporting that Bobby Ross's car game is breaking up at midnight. Eleven K, Roger that. Only have time to get downtown, Cole. It's possible. Have them bring him in. KGPL, can we have Lars Terrelson picked up? Eleven K, Roger. Roger. Hmm. Oboe camp with a shotgun. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> Is that him? Oh, that could be him. LAPD. We'd like a word with you. Save it for someone who's interested. They're fascists. Come to move us on and steal what little we have left. Six rounds won't get us far. We need you to stay copacetic. We need to hold out. How do we do that? Like this. Oh, shot the team's down, so if you want These men know they're harboring share, a murderer. We need to... Come here, bitch. Oh. Killing. Come on. Stinking hobo. Huh? 
Are you here out here with the killing women? Innocent women? Uh. What's your name? Comrade Stalin. Very funny. We'll find out from your personal effects. Stuart Ackerman. You're under suspicion for murder, Ackerman. We're taking you downtown. You. You can't do anything more to me than what the Japanese have already done. But wait, did he kill the lady? Oh, okay. The Kremlin's over here, Phelps. Toss it, see what you find. Oh, okay. So he was a war vet. I don't think so. <gasps> wow, he's the murderer. Yeah, he looked like it. He was a freaking creep. Better to match the mark under Teresa Terrelson's chin. Oh, dude. Oh, look, we've got another missing newspaper or hidden newspaper. Let's see. Missing morphine. I always like these stories. Still working, Jack. I'm off to the Lighthouse Club in Santa Monica. Hello, Jack. Mr. Vincent, this is Courtney Sheldon. He's a buddy of mine from the war. Well, I'm sure you two will want to polish some old war stories. Good evening, Jack. Mr. Sheldon. Good night, sir. Take a seat, Courtney. We need your help. Jack, I told you I would have nothing to do with that. I'm fine too, Jack. Medical school's going well. I got a part-time job. Do dope peddlers need part-time jobs? We made a mistake and we're in trouble, Jack. A local gangster, Mickey Cohen, is putting on the squeeze. So hand it over, walk away. What's stopping you? We had a deal with them, that they would dole it out slowly. They said they would supply abortion clinics and doctors, but they've been moving it on to addicts and they can't cope with the purity. So your problem is with gangsters being dishonest. My problem is that people are dying and that if this gets back to us, we'll all end up in jail. So how am I supposed to help, Courtney? This isn't the war. I can't just wave a magic wand and clean up your mess. We want you to negotiate, Jack. The only thing these guys understand is force, Sheldon. They got to the top back east by proving to be more vicious than the English, the Irish, and the Dutch. They make their own laws. That's the nature of a secret society. I'd say, Courtney, you want to be a doctor. How can you fight with that? We are better trained. I didn't make it through the war to come back to this kind of shit, Sheldon. Now right, we're gonna put this down. It's crazy how this game is kind of telling you like two stories in one, in a way. And they do tie to one another, of course. Okay, now I'm trying to find, I'm trying to find another clue. Hmm. Maybe nothing else in here. Is that it? It's not it. I'm missing something else. What about this right here? There it is. That's her little purse. That's the one she took with her that night. Yep. Indeed. Ackerman doesn't look like much of a dancer. Crystal ballroom. We're gonna interrogate Stuart. 
I think that's it. I think that is it. Alright, so now we're gonna head back. Let's get out of here. And let's head back. You're behind the wheel. Central police station. Here we go. Right. Where are we headed? Man, what a crazy, like, intriguing case this is. Like, I mean, all, all of these homicide cases have been really complex. Like, actually mind blown. The husband has an alibi, but no real motive other than neglect. Jessup's alibi checks out. Bates is a recidivist. He'll be pulling the same stick until we put him away for good. Ackerman has history, opportunity, hard evidence. What motive? He's just the evidence. We know she was here. <clears throat> All we need is a confession and we can charge the bum with murder. Now, why did he do it? That's the question. Ackerman, yep. you were in the Marines. How do you know? The Corps selected big guys for flamethrower duty. That's how you got the burns. Life expectancy was five minutes for a guy in flamethrower detail. What kind of a government puts weight like that on a man's shoulders? You'll get no argument from me. It was a heavy load. You feeling sorry for this smelly fuck? We've got Stuart Ackerman, brown hair, brown eyes, 36 year old male, sighted in the vicinity of Signal Hill. I, I really believe that it's this guy. He even looks like the person that was stalking the lady in the beginning of the, like the cinematic that we got. I think it's him. Here we go. Why did you kill Mrs. Terrelson? I have no recollection of the people I have killed. So he has killed people before. We found a rope in his. Let's accuse him with that. Are you denying that you strangled Mrs. Terrelson with a length of rope? I'm not denying anything. You have to have proof, lackey. Oh, this guy's a psycho. Okay. Where's that? Where's that? Where's the rope? And these shoes look like something he'd be wearing too. Bloody, a uh, bloodstained rope piece. We found a matching piece of rope in your lean-to. I think we'll find the blood will match, too. I own no property. How could it belong to me? Smart guy. Smart guy. A bus driver dropped Mrs. Terrelson near your camp around 2 a.m. Why did you take her up to the hill? Which hill? I have many places. I go where I please. Yeah, this guy's pretty easy to read. You are clearly insane, Ackerman. The state of California does not execute mental patients. I don't know the names of the women I've killed, but I've killed many of them. Their necks are so fragile. Stuart Ackerman, I am charging you with the murder of Teresa Terrelson. What a fucking psycho, dude. Complete psycho. And Feeney was right a next to him. <laughs> down on his luck, I can abide. But a filthy red who chooses to live outside the rules of society, I cannot stomach. Maybe poor threes of Tarleton will provide the catalyst we need. I've spoken to the chief and the mayor, and I think it's time we send some men in to remove the godless and send them on their way over the county line. A grand day that will be, gentlemen. And a grand result you have brought me. You two are fast becoming my finest crusaders. That's it. Are we done here, sir? Yes. Perfect. We only found 13 clues, unfortunately, but we got a lot of the answers right. Every witness counts. Even the cabbie who was among the last to see Teresa. So it was literally her. The reason for her dying was just that we had a war vet who has obviously PTSD and is traumatized in the head and it's crazy in the head. He's homeless. He doesn't care. He has nothing to live for. He just wanted to kill her because he's, that's what he does. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. We got a four star, not a five star, but we did okay. If you enjoyed this video, one more LA Noir here on the channel, be sure to leave it a like. And uh, hopefully I'll catch you guys on the next case.